Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling has been recently and officially released by AMD for the RX 7900, 7800 and 7700 series cards and people have been asking me to make a video of it and I bet some of you were already waiting. The first X driver from AMD was back in 2020 with the 20.5.1 beta drivers for the RX 5700 XT and that was it. No more drivers after that, not even for the RX 6000 series, as AMD stated those cards didn't seem to gain anything from this technology. But what is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling? Hex is a feature designed to reduce the CPU load during heavy tasks by passing most of the operating system scheduling to the hardware side, making it more efficient. Nvidia introduced it first for their cards, as they benefited the most since their drivers have and still have higher CPU overhead than the AMD ones, due to doing most of the scheduling software side of, putting then more load on the CPU, while the AMD cards have already most of the scheduling GPU side of. And with this all said, Will AMD GPUs actually benefit from hacks in normal gaming? And I say normal because hacks is a godsend uh, for people actually using, for example, or playing a lot with VR. For those people, I believe that the performance increase was quite a lot. I do not own a VR kit, so I can't actually test, but I did have some people commenting on my previous video about the 23.12.1 drivers that their performance and their, um, their overall smoothness of gameplay uh, on VR wh while using hardware accelerated GPU scheduling was much, much better. And for other people, for example, using emulators, those two sets of people or those two groups of people will enjoy eggs very much. But what about us? the normal gamers. Should we enable it or disable it? Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. Today we start with Assassin's Creed Mirage and you can immediately see that with the RX 7700 XT the difference is minimal, with all the results being inside the margin of error besides the slightly lower 1% lows at 1080p mostly, which is nothing really relevant in terms of real gameplay smoothness. With the RX 7900 XTX, it is a little different though, as it constantly has higher lows with X on, so indicating that it is not the margin of error in this case, being slightly slower both in averages and 1% lows, especially at 1080p and 1440p. Robocop Rock City, on the other hand, benefits from hacks but mostly at 1440p showing a small difference of 2 average FPS and 3 FPS in the 1% lows, something that gets more noticeable with the RX 7900 XTX that with AX delivers more average FPS in all resolutions being 5% faster at 1080p, which is not much of course, but it is welcomed. Hogwarts Legacy is one of those games that gets affected by the most idiotic thing somehow, and in here, hacks only help the, the RX 7700 XT's performance at 1440p. Somehow, where it was 10% faster. And we retested this several times with the X off being always, and repeat, always inferior. But only at 1440p. I guess this game is like a Vida Loca or some shit. <laughs> with the RX 7900 XTX though, we have the same average FPS across all the resolutions, but it seems activating eggs actually delivers lower 1% lows at 1080p and 1440p. And once again, this was tested several times, always with the same outcome. Just off. And since people were constantly pointing out that it is in CPU-bound scenarios that X shines, I also included Far Cry 6, which, as can be seen, works better with X off, when we're talking about at least the RX 7700 XT that has lower 1% lows with it. Also, if you're looking at the super low 4K results, it is because we're using HD textures and ray tracing at the same time, and the RX 7700 XT simply doesn't like it. As we move to the RX 7900 XTX, well, the results are virtually the same with all the variances being inside the margin of error. Nothing to see here. And Forza Horizon 5 is one of the few games where we indeed saw a bit of performance uplift for the RX 7700 XT, 
But once again, only at 1440p somehow, with two more FPS when using X. Not something you'll notice in real gameplay though, of course. With the RX 7900 XTX, well, we have increased FPS across the board, not once again something that you would notice as well in real gameplay scenarios, but it is free performance, especially in the 1% lows that are consistently higher across all resolutions. We also have the recently released Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and I actually thought they were releasing eggs because of this game and possibly due to a better FSR 3 implementation, the frame generation of course, but I tested FSR 3 frame generation with and without eggs and I saw absolutely no difference. And the same applies to the FPS numbers that are exactly the same with the RX 7700 XT. With the RX 7900 XT we have a mild FPS increase at 1080p, but that's about it. I mean, at 1440p and 4K they deliver exactly the same FPS numbers. Very solid benchmark tool, by the way. With Cyberpunk 2077, the RX 7700 XT is once again delivering slightly better performance at 1440p, while being inside the margin of error in the other resolutions, which is to be expected, and the RX 7900 XTX delivers exactly the same performance across the board, so no improvements at all in this game. Another CPU benchmark here is with a Rift Breaker, and with the RX 7700 XT and at over 120 average FPS, we have basically no differences in terms of results, being some small variations, maybe some small variations in the 1% lows, so AGS didn't help at all here. On the other hand, the RX 7900 XTX got a bit of a boost at 1440p and 4K. At 1440p we got 6 FPS more, and at 4K we had 7 FPS more in the 1% lows, translating into an 8% performance increase. As for Alan Wake 2, it is not only running worse with the 23.12.1 drivers compared to the 23.11.1, but getting even worse while running X, with a considerable decrease in the 1% lows at 1080p and 1440p with the RX 7700 XT. Something that sadly does not change with the RX 7900 XTX, that also delivers considerably lower 1% lows, especially at 1080p. And I tested this several times, it was always the same, sadly. In PUBG we saw no difference whatsoever with the RX 7700 XT that has all the results inside the margin of error. And the same applies to the RX 7900 XTX that even though it, it was considerably CPU bottlenecked at 1080p, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling made absolutely no difference. And now with Fortnite that uses Unreal Engine 5 like Robocop, but unlike Robocop, it gets lower 1% lows at 1080p and 1440p while getting slightly higher averages. Well, at least with the RX 7700 XT of course. As for the RX 7900 XTX, well, it is even worse if we're talking about 1080p, where it gets the same average FPS but delivers considerably lower 1% lows, showing that in here, at 1080p, Hex delivers a more stuttery gameplay. As for Starfield, it is a very CPU demanding game, and also one of the first where Hex delivers better performance at 1080p and 1440p with the RX 7700 XT. Not by much of course, but consistently higher. With the RX 7900 XTX though, things got a bit backwards once again, with the averages being virtually the same, but with Hex delivering once again lower 1% lows which kind of seems to be a pattern here. Moving to Counter-Strike 2, I just have to say that it is way harder to test and the results take a bit more time to understand. As for the average results, they're what you should focus on. The 1% lows in this game, at least with the cards that I tested so far, are usually higher at 1440p than 1080p somehow, and I think that's due to how the Source 2 engine handles the CPU and GPU loads. But I might be wrong, of course. And even there we got the 4K results with much higher 1% lows with AGS off, which is once again odd. And remember what I told you some seconds ago about the CPU and GPU loads? You see it here as well, where we actually have higher 1% lows at 4K than 1080p and 1440p. I mean, makes no sense. As for the average results, we have usually higher FPS with AGS on, especially at 4K, where the percentage difference is around 6%. And the last game benchmarked is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. 
In this game we see a very mild but constant performance increase in the averages with the RX 7700 XT and a way more noticeable increase with the RX 7900 XTX being better in averages and 1% lows with X activated. It seems the difference isn't much once again, but it is there, delivering for example 5% more 1% lows at 1080p. It is free performance. As for the 14 games averages, well, the only positive result with eggs on with the RX 7700 XT is at 1080p. And even there, it isn't even 2%, so it could be considered margin of error. The other two results are in yellow because even though they delivered the same results in terms of averages, they had lower 1% lows. With the RX 7900 XTX, we have roughly the same 1% lows, which is a good thing to start with, of course, but the only difference that we could consider is at 4K, where we have a 2.1% performance increase in the averages and 2.3% performance increase in the 1% lows. Now let's move to the conclusion and talk about some other important things. And well, guys, as you saw for the results, well, it, it, it is it more or less the same. same. Overall, I tested once again with the 7900 XTX and the 7700 XT, as you saw, and the differences were quite minimal. In some games we had a bit more FPS, in some others we had less, but in terms of overall, I can tell you that with the 7700 XT, of course, we have a bit less 1% lows, and with the 7900 XT as well, I personally prefer to use, uh, at least for now, at least for now, with the first implementation of hardware accelerated GPU scheduling from the AMD side, at least for now, once again, uh, I prefer to leave it off, especially since I don't do VR and I don't use emulators. What I mean with this is that you can leave it on or off because as you can see in terms of normal performance it is more or less the same with most cards or it should be more or less the same with, uh, with the cards supported so far. But once again, as soon as AMD starts working more in, and more on this and they actually implement it more and fix, I wouldn't say fix it, but at least they fine tune it more, it might become much better and it might actually deliver a consistent performance boost across the board. But since I don't live in the future, I don't really know. And just to finalize this video, I just want to say once again, why? Why hardware accelerated GPU scheduling right now? Why after all these years, release it right now with the first release of the proper implementation of FSR 3 in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, as you can see in this video, for example, which once again is the first well done implementation of FSR 3 frame generation. And why now? I thought it was because of the frame generation on FSR 3, of course, but it really wasn't. I tested the FSR 3 frame generation with and without hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, and it was exactly the same in terms of performance. And just going back to the point, I thought they were releasing AGS due to the frame generation implementation, since it seems I'm not sure now listen to me, I'm not sure, but I believe that uh, the frame generation from AMD needs to use the, the hacks, needs to use hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, it won't work without it. As for the AMD side, it works perfectly fine without it, as most of the hardware scheduling is already done uh, by AMD without the Windows implementation of that feature. So that's, I believe that's why it works and because both technologies are quite different in terms of how they work. So AMD is not releasing AGS because of the frame generation, or at least it doesn't seem like it. They aren't releasing it due to the frame generation. They aren't releasing it uh, for the normal gaming and only VR and emulators seem to be benefiting from performance uplifts. And this makes me believe that more things are coming and that it actually might work a bit better with AFMF, which is the fluid motion frames, basically frame generation inside the drivers that you can have now with the beta drivers. And it seems that it may actually improve the, um, possibly, for example, the, um, the input latency of the fluid motion frames within the drivers. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling might improve that by some milliseconds, and that's why they are releasing it now. But I will in some hours start testing it to, well, to know for sure if that's, th that's the case or not really. And well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video as that really helps a lot. And once again, leave your comment in the comment section if you have any doubts. And as always, I will answer as fast as I can. Thank you very much for watching once again and see you in the next video, guys. And for that, I'll just...